Good evening, everybody. And welcome again to the 33rd annual Junior Achievement Business Hall of Fame dinner. I'm David Rubinger, market president and publisher of the Atlanta Business Chronicle. And on behalf of the Business Chronicle, this partnership we've had with JA over the last 33 years has been incredible. And we're so glad to be back with you again to celebrate uh, Kathy and Ed tonight. And it's going to be a fantastic night. Uh, I get the privilege, usually I'm up here just saying welcome and that's about it. This year I have a really special pleasure. I get to sit down with these three ladies to discuss the wonderful continuum that is junior achievement. We have a middle school teacher, we have a high school teacher, and sort of most importantly, we have a junior from in high school here to discuss what junior achievement has meant to them over the years. And I'm so excited we're going to have this conversation. It'll be pretty quick because we need to get on to our, to our laureates, but I think you'd enjoy hearing from them directly how junior achievement has totally transformed education in our community. So ladies, it's great that you're all here with us. So um, I'm going to start with uh, Becca Rackley. Um, Becca is a middle school teacher in uh, the Gwinnett County School System. What school are you at? I'm at Northbrook Middle in Swanee. Yeah. So tell me about junior achievement um, how it's impacted your classroom. What goes on in your classroom on a daily basis that makes the JA experience part of what goes on? So early in the year, we start talking about some of the finance pieces, and I always start with budgeting. And the kids right away think they know a lot more than they actually do. <laughs> so someone gets it, that person's a parent. Um, right away, we talk about the importance of having a budget and paying yourself first and spending on necessities before luxuries. And so I do an assignment early on where they have to create a sample budget and the kids this year were like, okay, groceries, $200 a month, done. <laughs> and much like that, I laughed and I said, okay, your first homework assignment is to go home and ask your parents how much you spend on groceries in a month. And the next day they were turned flabbergasted by how much their family actually spends just to eat. So you t you, every year you take the kids down to the Discovery Center. Tell me what that experience is like for these kids when they, get, when they walk onto the campus for the first time. So once they open the doors and they see the town center that is J.A. BizTown, that, that's where the kind of the rubber meets the road, all these skills we've been talking about become real actions they have to do. And one of the best parts this year was we have a young lady named Issa and she's a little developmentally delayed. And so sometimes in the classroom, things are really hard for her, but JA invites everyone, even if a kid is struggling academically or if there's a language barrier and speaking English is difficult, they are welcomed with open arms into BizTown. And so as we were watching the businesses, Issa was at Cricket and she had a whiteboard in hand and she was out on the town green telling everyone, come buy our earbuds, come buy our earbuds. And for her, it was a chance to shine that she doesn't always get in the classroom. And as I was watching other businesses, kids were sort of standing back and waiting for people to come to them. And I got to say, check out Issa. Look at her. She's out there with a whiteboard and she's out hustling. And the kids really got to see her as a leader, which hadn't happened previously in the classroom. And so seeing these real life skills happen in such a fun environment is one of the best parts, and luckily this year I got to go first. Oh, I love that story. Daniela Molina. Daniela, tell us a little bit about yourself. You're in the 11th grade. Yes, sir. I go to Norcross High School in, in Norcross, Georgia. Yeah. So you've, you're a 3DE student right now. Yes, sir. But you attended the J Discovery Centers in both 6th and 7th grade, 7th grade, so you've been through the entire continuum from start to finish. Um, what did you learn at the Discovery Centers that you still think about today? What are the things that are still part in that memory from the Discovery Center days? Well, I mean, to, well, let's go back, right? Let's go sure. back to sixth grade. Right. Um, let's, go, let's go way back to sixth grade. Well, <laughs> way back. Way when you were back. a mere child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, going back to sixth grade, I went to BizTown, and when you go to 
both centers, you're assigned a role, basically, like a live scenario. And I landed CEO of Chick-fil-A. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And so there I was trying to manage like all of my friends, kind of, and trying not, trying not to boss them around. I don't know if that really worked out for me. But um, I was doing payroll and honestly hustling like Issa there. Um, trying to sell these little Chick-fil-A cows. They're like plushies. I still have one of them in my room. Um, and so, yeah, it was just it a great experience. Um, I got to work with a bunch of my friends that I'm still friends with today. Um, and then in seventh grade, I went to Finance Park. And it's a little bit different than this town. But I was, you're basically assigned a life role. And I landed a single mom with two kids and really low income. Oh, a salary. And so there I was trying to budget absolutely everything. $200 is definitely not enough for everything, especially groceries. Um, and so there I was doing electricity bills and utilities that I still don't really understand. But, <laughs> and I mean, it was difficult. I, I, I really underestimated how much money it really takes to run a family full of my kids. Kids? I don't have any kids. Um, so, so you were perfectly prepared then to go into the 3DE model. And so th you, you, go to, you go to Norcross high, high School, ninth grade, you've been in 3DE all the way through. Yes. Tell me about your favorite case study you had uh, during, and not, not that we're pandering to anybody, tell me about your favorite case study that you've had in, in, in that experience. I'm gonna look right at y'all. Yeah. So <laughs> my favorite case challenge was Delta, yes, yes. Um, Delta was during my COVID year, so coming back into school. Um, so we were given the case challenge of how to improve passenger experience when it came to COVID because everybody was super anxious and super scared. And so I remember at the theme, I believe it was creativity and innovation. And so my solution, well, the solution my group had come up with was, um, oh, Implementing UV lights into the boarding, yeah, boarding place, yeah, 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 boarding, um, to sanitize them, and the judges ate it up. They loved it. They loved it. <laughs> but I think what I really loved about that one is that at the, well, for that case challenge, I got the chance to work with, like, my best friends. Our teacher let us pick our groups, and I just remember us staying up to, like, 3 a.m. that last week right before the final presentation, just nitpicking and doing the tiniest little details. And we ended up winning that case challenge. And thank you. And I just remember the moment of like us winning is such a gratifying moment. And like, that's, that's definitely something I will never that's, forget. That, that is awesome. Now, Ms. Wright, do they, everyone call you Ms. Wright? Ms. Always Wright. Oh, Ms. Always Wright. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My husband's over there, Miss Always Right. That's right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Shayra Wright. <laughs> Shayra teaches AP Human Geography and has taught in the 3D model for four years now. Mm -hmm. I love it. Miss Always Right. That is awesome. <laughs> um, she is the lead teacher at South Gwinnett High School. Yes. <laughs> um, so, what has been the impact of the 3D model on your kids in your classroom on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, I always tell people when you look at 3DE, 3DE answers the questions that every teacher wants answered. And half of you have said to your teacher, I am never going to use this information again in my life. But I love that the case challenges give a real world application to what we're teaching. And so we were just in Arby's, sorry, Chick-fil-A. We were just in the Arby's case challenge. <laughs> And I was teaching about uh, unit five was agriculture and the kids were bummed. They were like, Miss Wright, we're gonna learn about cows and chickens and what does that have to do with AP human geography? And so I was just in a real quick conversation with them. I'm like, well, what are your solutions for your case challenge? Just, you know, just trying to pick their brain to see where they were. And I knew, I knew it was gonna come. Those dreaded two words, chicken wings. <laughs> All Arby's has to do is add chicken wings to their menu, and we're gonna come and 
the sales are going to fly and everything is going to be fantastic. So I said, you know what? I'm so tired of hearing about chicken wings. We got to go deeper. You are advanced placement scholars. And so, and so I went into it. We started learning about, took the information in the unit. We were learning about cattle feed lots and we were learning about chicken houses and governmental policies on big chicken. And I mean, we went a deeper dive. And after that, nobody's solution ended up being chicken wings. <laughs> Some people were, some of my scholars were upset with me. Some of them were happy that they knew. Some of them did not eat lunch that day. <laughs> but the case challenge really gives a real world application to what we're teaching. It makes it meaningful. I mean, it, you make, first of all, I want to take a class with her. There's no question. <laughs> I never had a teacher like Miss Always Right. This is awesome. So the question I have is, yes, you make, you make it fun for them but they get practical applications out of this that gets them prepared, correct? I mean, it gives them where they need to get to? Absolutely, and so even with what the practical applications, we also teach the competencies. I love that we are pushing the competencies, and a lot of your business models and principles and a lot of your businesses are uh, very similar, and so I, I have a lot of examples. One of my scholars um, with the competencies, they'll always come to you and that grade is a 79, and they're trying to get the grade to an 80. Engaging communication always comes into play when you're trying to get Miss Always Right to raise your grade when you did not earn it. <laughs> I had one situation where I had one of my scholars, one of them was a, uh, last year, he was a quarterback. Wide receiver was across the room. Friday night came, wide receiver did not run his routes. I said, see, that is effective collaboration. You didn't do that well. <laughs> So I love that we can also bring the competencies in, um, into play as well. I love it. Okay, so the question is, how is Jay going to set up your kids for the future? I'm going to start with the kid. Daniela, so how do you think Jay has set you up for the future, and what, what does the future look like for you? So the plan, the plan, guys. The plan we're going for is to try to get into UGA, right? So yeah, go dogs. <laughs> Um, but I feel like ever since freshman year, I've just been trying to build up like my academics, my extracurriculars, and my jobs. And so I think for me, 3DE is just taking into advantage all the little things, along with the big things, but genuinely it's the little things that have mattered so much to me. So with that being said, um, over the summer I applied for a job and I had already had my resume and my cover letter done by like freshman year and so the job application process was so much easier than if I hadn't and so today I still have friends coming up to me being like what is a cover letter <laughs> like what do I write and so they come to me and ask for my advice and that's such a gratifying feeling like knowing that I can help them when it comes to things like that but back to the job um, when it came to do my interview, I was so confident. Well, not that confident, but I was so much more I, I confident. I think you're plenty confident. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but I was so much more confident than if I hadn't done 3DE when it came to speaking to an actual adult right. that was going to pay me in the future. And um, I just, I remember walking out of that interview so, feeling so proud proud in a, in a sense of like you wouldn't like in the moment you didn't think that 3D would help you with all everything that you just went through but when you look back at it you're like oh my goodness regardless um talking about the little things at my school we have a DECA chapter and so I joined well me and my sponsor and my advisor restarted the club up two years ago and here I am today two years later president of the club and so I think 3DE to me is just, like I said again, just taking into consideration the little things and using it to my advantage. All right, let's hear for Daniela. She's... <laughs> now, now, Becca, I know you're earlier in the process. Your kids aren't looking like, what are they gonna do with their lives quite yet in middle school? And we all know how easy it is to teach middle school. It's a piece of cake, right? Totally, cakewalk every day. Um, so what do you see the Jay experience meaning to your kids? 
these life skills that we teach, both the soft skills like working with a team, having a boss, being part of a job, those are skills that everybody needs and you need them early and you need them often. And so those soft skills are huge, but also some of the more specific junior achievement skills like knowing the difference between a debit card and a credit card. And when sixth graders learn that now, it prevents that moment when they're 21 and they're spending the wrong way and making a financial mistake that can follow them for a long time. Do you hear the, bu you hear the buzz yeah. in the audience? It's clear that... <laughs> this reminds me of that moment. You probably all said, well, they didn't teach me this in school. We are teaching it in school now. <laughs> Thanks to junior achievement. Exactly right. And so... BizTown especially gives sixth graders a chance to have financial independence for a day without any terrifying consequences, which is exciting, but really prepares our kids when they get older. And kids from ESA to kiddos like Daniela, who have everything going for her, are both going to need those skills when they get out into the real world. And JA gives kids as early as 11 a chance to start trying those things out. That, that, that's perfect. Let's give Becca a round of applause. Okay, Miss Always, right? Bring us home. You've got, you've got these kids, you're getting them ready for life. This is, not, this is, again, it's fun and games, but you're getting them ready for life. Right. This is awesome. Yes, it is. And so I have to tell you just really quickly about three of my football players. Um, I taught at Martin Luther King Jr. High School for two years with the 3D program. And then I went to Gwinnett Where's Greater uh, to South. <laughs> 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 to South. Um, and I have three football players at Martin Luther King Jr. High School the entire time. They've been friends since elementary school, and so they had their lead teacher, new lead teacher for 3D, call me, hey, Miss Wright, the kids want you to come back. I said, okay, I'm coming back to Market Day. I've been with them since their ninth grade year. So I was like, yeah, let's go. I'm coming. And so I come in, and all the kids are greeting me, and they're telling me about their new boyfriends and all the cars that their parents bought them and, and all, everything that's happening. But I'm seeing that there's a line that stretched from the back of the gym to the front of the gym. And so I'm like, what business is this? What is happening? And so I kind of look back there, and there's my three football players. And the thing that... I tried to instill with them that unfortunately was instilled with them in, inside of them was that football was the way out. That was it. It was football or nothing. And so I went to talk to them after their shark tank and they're, they're in the back and they have a table with a slushy machine, two coolers of ice, syrup, nerds, Skittles, but they are making money. They are making pain. And so after shark tank, I asked them, I said, why slushies? Like, why a uh, icy business? And I said, Miss Wright, you don't remember those conversations we would have? And so I would tell them, you know, talking out loud as teachers do, I need to make sure I have $5 for my own kids. You know, during class, I would say, I make sure I got $5 because I got to give it to my kid because Kona Ice is going to be at the school. Kona Ice is going to be at the school. And so, and, and so I'm living on one side of the county. I'm teaching on the other side of the county. And so I said, Miss Wright, we learned about filling a need. And I was like, okay. And so they said, we wanted to know why Kona Ice or any of those type of companies never came to our school. So we went back to elementary teachers and those APs and we talked to them and we wanted to know why. And, said they, and so what was told to them was that it was not going to be profitable. So they wouldn't come. And so I said, okay. And so he looked me dead square in my eyes and he said, Ms. Wright, we're going to be there for the hood. There won't be one kid once we get our food truck up and going, who won't be able to, who will, won't ever experience that. Everybody's going to experience that no matter what school they're at. And I was like, that is absolutely fantastic. And so I have to take this moment just to, to tell you all that because you guys are agents of change in Metro Atlanta, you're breeding other kids who want to be agents of change in their community. And for that, like, it did something for me. When teachers are falling away, it just gave me, like, 3D is just giving me something different, like a new fire, you know, to stay in it longer, especially with those kids. So I'm great, like, really appreciative. Let's hear it from this always, right? And now let's hear from all three of these lovely ladies. Thank you so much.
And thank you to everyone here for supporting JA. Congratulations to our honorees and enjoy the rest of the evening. Thanks again.